in Learning Objective 3, we're going to look at and build some pro forma financial statements to analyze uh, these projects and make sure we make a good investment decision. Again, the three we will be looking at very closely are the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow. So essentially, again, we're going to do these in order. First, we're going to build and set up a one-page sheet of assumptions for each of these statements, especially the first two. I'm, I'm going to have a, a one-page income statement and a one-page set of assumptions to go with it and then a one-page balance sheet and a one-page set of assumptions, and from those two will fall out a statement of cash flows. Uh, again, we're probably going to do these for five years in most cases, and uh, we're interested in cash flows ultimately. Let's do a sample uh, project here. Uh, let's say we want to um, build and start up a shark attractant project, which will cost us $90,000 in investment. We're going to build a small shed, and we're going to put some equipment, so we're going to have some property, plant, and equipment in there, and we're going to depreciate it at uh, a rate of uh, a straight line to zero over three years, and then we're going to close this project down. So picture this project going on for three years. Uh, from that, we're going to need to do an income statement, quick balance sheet, and cash flow. Um, make some projections and some assumptions. As I said, one-page uh, sheet of assumptions, one-page income statement. Uh, we're going to project that this shark attractant product can sell 50,000 units at four bucks a unit, giving us sales of 200,000. Uh, the variable cost will be 250 a unit. Um, $2.50 a unit times 50,000 units is $125,000 in variable cost. The contribution margin, which we calculate to see if we have coverage of our fixed costs, a very important calculation, sales minus variable cost equals contribution margin. Our author uh, doesn't include that in the book, uh, so you want to put those words in your book in that little income statement uh, on, under variable cost. Sales minus variable cost equals contribution margin of $75,000. Uh, it co does indeed cover our fixed cost of $12,000, so we're going to go ahead with the project. Depreciation will be $90,000 on the property, plant, and equipment divided by three years straight line to zero, $30,000 per year. On the uh, of depreciation expense on the income statement, leaving us with EBIT of 33,000, taxes at 34 percent or 11,220, leaving us with net income of 21,780. From this, we can quickly do a uh, an OCF EBIT plus D minus T. So we would take 33,000, add back depreciation because it's a non-cash expense. We're trying to calculate cash flows. So plus 30,000 minus 11,220 um, will give us our cash flow. Uh, that we need to calculate. Um, we also need to look at uh, networking capital, and we also need to, which will be twenty thousand dollars negative at time zero to start this project again for current assets, less current liabilities, and uh, net fixed assets. will build a little inc a little balance sheet like you see here in Table ten point two, um, which will show the gross fixed assets of ninety thousand dollars each year. Today, it's $90,000. Uh, end of year one, the gross fixed assets are $90,000. End of year two, still $90,000. End of year three, still $90,000. Then you see the accumulating depreciation, $30,000, $60,000, and $90,000 by the end of year three. And you'll see your net fixed assets going down from $90,000 today to zero by the end of year three. Again, we'll calculate the operating cash flow, OCF uh, minus or CFFA, I'm sorry, will be OCF minus NCS minus CNWC. And we get that OCF by building a full vertical income statement, as we've done on a prior slide. So always build your income statement all the way down to NPAT so we can calculate OCF several different ways. So here's our income statement again uh, that we projected. Uh, the uh, cash flow will be uh, 51780 because it's... Um, EBIT of 33,000 plus D of 30,000, which I add back in because it's a non cash expense, minus taxes of 11,220 to get OCF of 51,780. Now I will get this 51,780 in each year for three years because uh, it's a three year project, then we're going to close it down. We will have working capital negative at time zero, and then uh, we'll recapture that working capital at the end of the third year by selling off the remaining shark attractant product and knocking on doors and collecting our accounts receivable. So we do a little OCF table, um, OCF of 51,780 for each of the three years we're going to run this project. Uh, we have negative networking capital of $20,000 today, negative uh, property plant and equipment cost of $90,000. That's again for the uh, little shell we're going to build, the building, and also this, the grinding equipment we're going to put inside the building. And our total project cost today is $110,000. For that, we'll get 51,780 in, 51,780 in, 51,780 in in the third year, plus recapture of our working capital. We'll change that working capital sign 
the plus 20,000, then we'll get 71,780 and in year three. And again, I can use all of those analyses we did in session number nine on these cash flows. So I can do an MPV. I just find out the discount rate from the CFO and I can do an MPV on this project. I can do a payback period. The question is, do we pay the uh, CFO back in year one? No. Do we pay the CFO back in year two, her $110,000? No. Sometime before, uh, during year three, we pay her back. So if she has a less than three-year payback period, this project will qualify. And then we're also going to do the IRR on this one. Uh, we would do that by um, taking uh, MPV equals zero equals minus 110,000 plus 51,780 over one plus R plus 51,780 over one plus R squared plus 71,780 over one plus R cubed. Calculate the rate at which your cash uh, discount of cash inflows equals your cash outflow of $110,000. We want to look at um, include changes in network and capital in our analyses. So uh, just not the uh, pure sales number. Sales won't generate uh, pure cash income. We must look at and, and take out the increase in accounts receivable. And from cash costs, we must subtract increases in accounts payable. And again, this is just following our uh, OCF minus NCS minus CNWC uh, methodology. Uh, here's an example, 10.1 Combat Wombat Teleset has sales of 998, cost of 734, and you have some working capital involved, uh, beginning and ending balance sheet. So from this, you see that your accounts receivable went up 10, your inventory went down 20, and your uh, accounts payable went down 30. And so what is the cash inflow, the true cash inflow? What's the true cash outflow? And uh, what is the net cash flow? Again, net cash flow will be CFFA. OCF minus NCS minus CNWC. So cash sales were 998, but receivables went up by 10, so we didn't collect that cash. So we would uh, post our cash sales as 988. Costs were 734, but inventories went down. So we didn't replace $20 of inventory, so costs were actually overstated by that amount. Uh, so we will um, take out that 20. And um, payables went down by 30. And uh, we actually paid our suppliers $30 more than we received, resulting in $30 understatement of cost. So my cash costs are $734 minus the 20 of inventory that we didn't replace, plus the 30 of uh, cost based on payables. So we get a cash cost of $744, and our net cash flow is $988 of net sales, net cash sales, minus $744 of net cash cost, or $244 overall. Networking capital went up $20. Uh, we can also, again, do the same thing by doing uh, OCF minus NCS minus CNWC, and that's exactly what we just did on that slide. Depreciation is a concern. We, uh, it's a, a good thing in that it's a non-cash expense, and it reduces our taxable income, so therefore it's a tax shield. So to the degree we can accelerate our depreciation, we want to do that legally, ethically, and morally in accordance with IRS guidelines. Um, so a MACRS, you may hear in your accounting class, an advanced accounting class, uh, is another method of um, calculating your depreciation. Uh, the IRS allows this. It's a little bit accelerated method of getting a little bit more depreciation in the early years so that you can reduce your taxable income even more. Uh, so we've seen, you'll see methods like straight line depreciation, some of years digits, double declining balance, and then this newer one, MACRS, let's see how we do it. Um, every asset gets thrown into an asset class by the IRS, and then the IRS will provide you with a depreciation table. And I just simply take the percentage of depreciation times the cost of the asset, and uh, it will all work out to 100% fully depreciated if you've done your math max correctly. Some examples, so the IRS will give you a three-year class, and our research equipment goes into that, a five-year class for autos and computers, and a seven-year class for most other industrial equipment. And they have other years uh, tables for um, uh, property, plant, and equipment that you can depreciate. So we'll stick with the three, five, and several simple examples. Here's uh, the IRS tables for the three years. So uh, basically you take 33 and a third percent and depreciate the first year, 44.44. So you get a little bit more in that second year versus straight line, which would just be 33 and a third each year. And then a little bit in year three and a little bit even in year four. So a three-year depreciation class goes for four years. A five-year depreciation uh, class goes for six years. And a seven-year depreciation class, actually you get some depreciation each year for eight years. So this is the MACRS model, so know how to do this. And you can tell if you've done it correctly because your uh, f project should be fully depreciated, your property, plant, and equipment, or asset should be fully depreciated um, if you've done your math max correctly. 
Uh, don't forget that you book and market are different, so you may sell a uh, piece of equipment after the project is concluded, and you may get something uh, for that, some money for that, even though it's fully depreciated. In that case, you have a, a gain, and Uncle Sam will want some tax on that gain. If you sell it for less than book, um, you may have a loss for tax purposes. Here's an example of how to do the MACRS. Uh, this is a five-year class, $12,000 cost of equipment. So the first year I take the uh, proper percentage times, uh, which is 20% times 12,000, I get depreciation of 2,400 and so on. You just multiply the percentage in the table times the cost of the equipment and each year you get your depreciation amount. Those depreciation amounts should add up to $12,000 if you've done your mathematics correctly and the thing should be fully depreciated and have an ending book value of zero at the end of the sixth year in the five-year class. So you can test your mathematics two ways there and make sure um, you've done your math correctly. Here's an example of a, a company, Staple Supply, that just installed a uh, new computerized information system, cost of 160,000, five-year straight line to zero, no, five-year uh, depreciation, five-year property. We're gonna do the MACRS instead of um, this. Uh, what are the yearly depreciation allowances? Do MACRS instead of straight line? Based on historical experience, uh, if we can get $10,000 when we get rid of it in four years, what are the tax consequences? And what's the total after-tax cash flow? Since we're using MACRS, we get the five-year table, pull it out, 20% the first year, 32% um, the second year, and so on down the table. And uh, all the uh, MACRS percentages add up to 100%. And then we just simply multiply those percentages times the uh, cost of the equipment. And if I add up all my depreciation amounts, they should add up to 160000 and they do. And my ending book value will zigzag and wind down to zero. And the question is, what happens if I sell that piece of equipment um, in year four? The book value is 27648 from our table. The, uh, if we sell for $10,000, we have a loss, in that case, of 17648 uh, for tax purposes, and so we get a uh, little bit of benefit from the IRS in this case, and I save on our taxes of 34% uh, times 17,648 of loss, and I get uh, $6,000 back in taxes, so I'll have a $16,000 positive cash flow in that case.